intelligence is anything but rare among human beings. It's found among the children of poverty and the children of great wealth. It's found among every race and religion. It's found among little boys and little girls. Children are capable of amazing things. In 1907, one woman challenged the way traditional schools attempted to educate children, beginning with the children of poverty. Her name is Dr. Maria Montessori. She noticed that the children of very, very poor families were displaying the same intelligence, curiosity, and awareness that the children of her very wealthy friends did. And her question was, what could be done to design schools or learning experiences that would work with human nature instead of ignoring it or actually fighting against it? Uh, she began to bring in all sorts of sensory puzzles and other devices that were used for measuring intelligence among adults. She quickly discovered that the children would solve these problems and do them over and over and over again and demand more. Today, there are more than 5,000 schools in North America. What parents and educators are finding is that the traditional model in the United States has not really been working that well and doesn't seem to be able to be modified in a way that works better. And so I think parents are turning to um, other kinds of education, Montessori being one of them. Specially trained Montessori teachers provide lessons that are designed to promote learning through curiosity, inquiry, and exploration. Children can learn individually or in small groups, allowing students to learn at a pace that is comfortable for them. The teachers are trained observers. They watch the children in the classroom. They watch what they gravitate towards. They watch what they avoid. And then we have strategies, and it depends on the child. You know, some children you can say, I've got this fabulous lesson. Come, I've, I've got this lesson for you. The way the children were behaving, the way they were, you know, working independently of one another, uh, how the older children were helping the younger children, and how the teachers seemed to be more of a facilitator and an observer more so than a dictator at the top of the class, just repeatedly, you know, drilling children as to what they needed to do next. The children were working, you know, very cohesively in their own individual environments. And it was very impressive to see. I would say that um, this em environment allows her to be creative and free, and um, she loves coming to school every day. So I think, I think this is the way education was uh, intended because I think, it should be, I think you should enjoy learning. And for us, that means that she'll always have a love of learning. The best thing about coming to school is that like, there's always something new to learn like every day. While some Montessori schools are found in more affluent communities, many are public or private, serving a very diverse population of families. We don't talk about diversity as much as we talk about peace. And peace implies a kind of acceptance, more than tolerance, not just tolerance, but a kind of acceptance of a wide variety of folk. Because underneath it all, uh, we learn in many of the same ways, we have the same values, we certainly have the same hopes for our children. The diversity is represented by the variety, but it's also represented by our intention to connect people and hold them together. To ensure the education model's continued growth, the Montessori Foundation was created as a resource for the Montessori community. We work with the leaders and the boards and the owners of schools. We help in the creation of new schools by offering advice, by offering resources, answers to questions, by helping them to, to go through all of the birth pains of creating a new private or public school. Um, the second thing we do is we train Montessori school leaders. We have all sorts of courses that we've taught for many, many years in everything from the design of beautiful environments to how to recruit the right families for your school to how to find the right teachers, how to turn them into a team, curriculum design and so forth. We also really focus on the development of Montessori at the high school level. I started in elementary school, a public elementary school, and then I was homeschooled for multiple years, and then I came to a Montessori education. I like this better because it's more personal. I mean, when a teacher has 30, 40, 100 kids to deal with, depending on the school, you can't have personalized grades, you can't have the personalization, you can't talk to the teacher one-on-one -on -one necessarily. They oftentimes seem to be overwhelmed. The Montessori Foundation is looking ahead to the future and thinking about 
you know, what's the modern family? What do they need? Um, and how do, the, how do we communicate with them? And so one of the things that we've been working on is a, an online family resource center. It's called Tomorrow's Child Online. And what we're trying to do is appeal to the families of the 21st century and that they can go there and look for resources along with Tomorrow's Child magazine is on there as well. This Tomorrow's Child, it's a real meaty uh, magazine. Um, it really addresses a lot of the questions that we may not even know to ask. And we can also look to um, the future of what our child is going to be learning. And, and we keep saying to ourselves, we made the right choice, we made the right choice. One thing that makes the Montessori Foundation and its affiliated membership uh, organization that we founded, the International Monastery Council, I think different and important is we work with everybody. Regardless of what association uh, trained the teachers or what other organizations the school belongs to, no matter how strong the school is or how young and new, we attempt to be a friend to one and all. Anything you have a question about, you can go ask and you've got a, a group of of people who have worked for many, many years and work with many Montessorians throughout the world. The Montessori Foundation traditionally has not asked for contributions. It was set up by my family and I organized it to, to operate as a very entrepreneurial nonprofit that would be self-supporting. My goal was to encourage families to support their schools and not to try to support the Montessori Foundations. But as the demands have grown, the staff of the Montessori Foundation has grown, and the scope of the, the programs has gone from being American only to worldwide. The bottom line is the, the needs are dramatically greater than what we can do on our own. And so while the Montessori Foundation continues to be very careful with money and to organize itself to be self-supporting as much as it can, We've also discovered that there's a legacy, that if this work is to continue as an independent source of help and stability for the Montessori schools of the world, that we're going to need to go from being essentially an educational foundation that is self-supporting to one that has resources much larger, an endowment that will be enduring and allow future generations of Montessori leaders to keep the work going. To find out more about Montessori schools in your area, visit Montessori.org or call the number on your screen.